This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, has the Blockstream Jade hardware wallet been compromised? And we're going to be talking about the Jade Classic as well as the Jade Plus hardware wallets. This is what happened. Blockstream recently disclosed a security vul vulnerability in their Jade hardware wallet firmware that could allow an attacker to extract your seed. In other words, your 12 or 24 words that basically controls your Bitcoin. Fortunately, there are no reports, at least yet, of anyone having lost any Bitcoin as a result of this vulnerability. As they mentioned in their report, as Blockstream mentions, quote, we wish to emphasize that we are not aware of this vulnerability being exploited by any malware in the wild, end quote. Another quote from them, if you only use the official Blockstream app on a malware-free device, then your Jade is not at immediate risk of exploitation from the identified vulnerability. Additionally, if you only use QR mode, then you are not at risk. Note that in both cases, we still recommend that you upgrade as soon as possible. So basically, if you're using a QR code mode, you're not at risk, but if you're plugging it in through the USB port, using a USB connection, or using Bluetooth with your Blockstream Jade, you're definitely at risk, and you definitely need to upgrade the firmware as soon as possible. Now, it appears that Blockstream handled this vulnerability correctly and responsibly. I will put a link to their report in the description notes below. Basically, they were notified by a third party in August and they took immediate action. But that, all that being said, this is an extremely serious vulnerability because obviously having your private keys extracted from your hardware wallet is literally the worst thing that could happen. This is the whole point of having a hardware wallet to protect you against something like this. And at least for me, this vulnerability calls into question the entire Blockstream Jade security model simply because Jade hardware wallets do not contain a secure element, unlike cold card hardware wallets, for example. Secure element is just that tamper-resistant microprocessor chip that's designed to store secrets that's at the heart of these hardware wallets, and they're very good at storing secrets like your 12 or 24 word seed. Instead of using a physical secure element, Jade uses a remote blind Oracle server. It's a little complicated how it works, but I'll put a link to this article in the description notes below if you want to read a little bit more about it. While this is a very clever solution, it does come with a few downsides. Number one, unlocking your Jade can be glitchy at times, especially if you're trying to use it with third-party software like the Sparrow Wallet. Number two, if Blockstream servers are down, you can't unlock your Jade using that mode, but you must instead use the Jade as a stateless signer. In other words, you enter your seed temporarily, and then it gets erased when you power off. So that's another downside of having a virtual secure element. And number three, of course, if your seed is not being stored inside of a secure element, it could be extracted by a firmware vulnerability exactly like the one that was just disclosed. If you're enjoying this video so far, just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So another quote from their report, uh, Blockstream writes, the vulnerable code can only be reached on an initialized and unlocked device, an unlocked Jade, where the device was unlocked using the same interface that the RPC is called on. RPC just stands for Remote Procedure Call. It's how one piece of software asks another piece of software to run a function. So it only works, uh, you only have a problem if you're using it with USB or Bluetooth as they go underwrite. This means a USB connected device is only vulnerable to USB RPC remote procedure calls and a Bluetooth connected device is only vulnerable to Bluetooth RPC calls. A device that has been temporarily unlocked is only vulnerable on the interface that was chosen when it was unlocked. So if you unlock it using the USB, it's vulnerable just for USB and not for Bluetooth, etc. QR mode is not vulnerable as it does not expose an RPC RPC interface at all. So this is the problem, having any kind of RPC vulnerability like this in the firmware and then having no secure element like the Jade. That's incredibly dangerous combination. For now though, your Jade should be fine if you already have one. Your Jade should be fine if you update to the latest firmware. If you think that your computer, your laptop has been compromised or has malware on it, they say uh, they recommend here, and I'll put a link to this in the description notes below, they recommend that you first back up your seed phrase, your 12 or 24 words, and then factory reset your Jade before plugging it into your computer to do a firmware update. And I'll put a link, you wanna update to one of these two versions. I probably would not use Bluetooth after all of this. I would just use the no radio which just offers, uh, just works with USB or QR support. This is version 1.0.38, no radio. And there's some instructions here how to upgrade your Jade. I personally stopped recommending the Jade hardware wallet back in September of this year after Adam Back threw his full weight behind Bitcoin Core and their plans to release Bitcoin Core 
version 30. And I made this video at the time on September 23rd saying for this reason, I will no longer be recommending any Blockstream products or services, including the Jade hardware wallet. And I'm glad that I did that since Adam's gaslighting and bad faith argumentation about op return and spam and potential soft forks has only gotten much, much worse since then. I'm not the only one who's not, not happy with Adam these days. Here's Giacomo writing, what I'm embarrassed of is having kept, having really kept assuming good faith for so long, conversation is done for me. Nick Zabo responding to Adam back when he says, I just want to stop spam and misuse. Nick Zabo writes, this is such uh, utter illogical bullshit. You fool fewer people with it every time you spew it, stop already. And I made a video about this called Has Adam Back Been Compromised, which I'll put a link to in the description notes below. Just to give you one small example, here's Adams responding to someone who says, Core takes a welcoming stance, Bitcoin Core takes a welcoming stance towards spam transactions. Adam responding, that is incorrect. That's your self-interpretation, which none of the mainline developers agree with, except one of the lead maintainers right here who does happen to agree with that. So this is Adam asserting something that's blatantly false in the face of overwhelming evidence. And I'll play this briefly so you can hear that evidence. Like you, like if you don't like cat photos, you don't like wizards or whatever, that's like your choice, right? But I don't think um, this is not a legitimate transaction or, you know, this is a waste of blocks, you know, because NFTs are bad or whatever. I don't think that language has a play. Well, I don't think that should be considered when you are talking about writing policy. Though. So how can Adam Back be asserting things like this, that this is your self-interpretation, which none of the mainline developers agree with? That's Gloria Zhao right there giving a very open and welcoming stance toward spam transactions on Bitcoin. And then it comes to other accusations against Adam Back, which I want to play briefly here. That I analyze is I analyze the proximity of individual players to the proof of weapons network. So when Adam Back, someone I've got deep respect for, Cypherpunk, um, in the original white paper mentioned by Satoshi, but when he starts creating Bitcoin treasury companies, I know that he's going to be partnering with Howard Lutnick, Howard Lutnick, the creator of Cantor Fitzgerald, Jeffrey Epstein's neighbor, um, that I believe was a part of Operation Choke Point 2.0, deeply connected to the deep state. Um, and if there, you know, if... So that's the problem when someone like Adam begins to partner with deep state actors like the Lutnicks. This is another uh, quote from uh, Dr. Cruz talking about the same issue. But I have to tell you that the Bitcoiners that we listen to, um, be careful who packs your parachute. I think that's really my message. And I think when you understand some of the history, like, for example, I agree 100 percent with Simon about Adam back. I don't I, I don't think if I was a meeting organizer, I would ever invite Adam back to another meeting if you want to know the truth because I think it's obvious that he's cooked. So this is the problem with using a hardware wallet that's made by a company that has a very vocal CEO who's been behaving in the way he has lately. And so we see people like Bitcoin is ungovernable writing here, we'll never touch a jade, ad spam back, made sure of that. And beauty on response, second order effects begin. For all anyone knows, the jade is a properly built device. But, but as I said earlier today about Giacomo, there will always be the requirement of trust. And no, quote, you can read the source and see the schematics is not a one-to-one -one replacement of trust for any normal person. And so for that reason, I'm just using cold cards at the moment, and they happen to be running a sale. I'm not being paid or compensated by them in any way. But this, these are my two favorite hardware wallets, the cold card Mark IV here and the cold card Q. And when we do a comparison of prices, especially with the cold card Mark IV, currently being uh, under $130 on sale, that really does compare favorably. I don't know why anyone would buy a Blockstream Jade uh, at these at these price points, even with the sale that's going on, because you can get a cold card for less money than you can even get a Jade Plus. Now, again, if you have a Blockstream Jade and you want to keep using it, if you upgrade the firmware, you should be fine, especially if you're using it in sort of a multi-vendor, do-it-yourself, multi-sig, uh, vault sort of situation where it's not the primary signer. So if you have an old Jade that you want to keep using, I'm sure it'll be fine. But when it comes to upgrading, I would say that uh, Blockstream is not my favorite company anymore. And so I'll be sticking to cold cards. Another thing about the cold card that I should have mentioned when we were talking about 
the secure elements is that both the cold card Q and the Mark IV, they use two different secure elements from different vendors. They use one from Microchip and one from Maxim. And then uh, as they write here, by employing secure chips from three different ma manufacturers, cold card significantly mitigates the risk associated with potential vulnerabilities inherent in any single vendor's technology. And that's the nice thing about cold cards as well. If there's some RPC call problem and uh, they're trying to extract your seed or someone's trying to extract your seed, they won't be able to because it won't be being stored in the physical secure element rather than just the virtual secure element that the Blockstream Jade hardware wallet has. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.